I began using my Ubuntu desktop in 2007 on Ubuntu version 7.04, and that was right after having switched from Windows Vista after a number of problems with Windows Vista. So really, Linux is all about choices, and a lot of people have commented on certain things they have seen in my desktop where I've done other videos on the channel. Welcome back to the Scottabyte channel, and this is Scott. Today, we're going to talk about Ubuntu and specifically customizing desktops. So Linux is all about making the experience custom for the end user. And just about everything in any Linux desktop can be customized to meet your particular needs. And distro swapping, or otherwise known as distro hopping, is popular for users that came from Windows because they don't realize that you can customize any distro and really make it operate and appear any way that you want. So in this tutorial, I'm going to show how to customize an Ubuntu desktop with some of my favorite options and applications. Here we are with the stock installation of Ubuntu. And again, anything that I do in this video are my own personal preferences. So I'm going to go in the upper right hand corner and I'm going to check off dark style. And then I'm going to do a control alt T to bring up a terminal. One of the first things I like to do whenever you're installing a new version of any uh, Debian based operating system is to update the repositories and also to update the installed applications. And so we're going to do that with the sudo apt update to update the repositories and a sudo apt upgrade to upgrade all of the software that is installed on the system. After updating the system, one of the next things that I like to do is to install a package called Ubuntu Restricted Extras. And that has a lot of um, codecs and other things that might be copyrighted like Microsoft fonts and such. But I like installing them because it improves the usability of the operating system. During the course of installing the Restricted Extras, you're going to get a splash screen that is the end user license agreement for the true type core fonts. And so again, a lot of times these are not included in the base operating system because there may be some proprietary concerns and that's why they're not included. So then we're asked if we agree to the end user license. And of course I do. So I'm going to go ahead and continue. In any Linux operating system, it's possible to control things through the GUI. However, most Linux users very early become comfortable with the terminal. And that being the case, I like to install an application called the Terminator Terminal along with these um, fonts Powerline, which are Powerline fonts. And then I'm also installing the Nano Editor because my particular installation of Ubuntu is lean and mean and doesn't include a lot of these extras. So as we go along, I'm going to install things as I need them. In order to make this new terminal the default, I'm going to execute a command which is sudo update dash alternatives where I configure my X terminal emulator. I hit enter and the choice here is going to be terminator by default as opposed to the GNOME terminal. So I'm going to hit enter here. Now I'm going to make some changes to the defaults of the terminal and I'm going to do a nano.boshrc, which is the login script. And then when I get in here, I'm going to do a alternate forward slash, which moves me to the end of the file in the nano editor. And then I'm going to paste in a bunch of additional code. I'll do a control O and enter to save the file out and a control X to exit the nano editor. And then likewise, I'm going to do a sudo nano on forward slash root forward slash dash dot Bosch RC. And this is the Bosch RC file for the root user. 
And again, I'm going to do an alternate forward slash to move to the bottom of the file. And then I'm going to paste in this additional code, which will be in the show notes. Do another control O and enter to write the file out and a control X to exit the nano editor. At this point, I'm gonna go ahead and do an exit to exit out of the terminal. And now if I do a control alt T, it will bring up the Terminator terminal, which is what you see here with my customized font. And so for example, if I do an LS command, you can see that there's a different font in this terminal. And there's also a lot of capabilities to further customize the Terminator terminal. Some examples of things you can do with the Terminator terminals, if I right click inside of it and go to preferences and then go over to profiles, I can select colors and I can change the particular color settings that I have here being gray on black or white on black or whatever I might want here as an option, but I'm going to leave it where I have it right now. In addition to that, you can also change your fonts. And one of the things I like to do is go over here to the general tab and change this font to not use the system fonts, but type in monospace and choose monospace regular and my personal preference is uh, choose a font size that's a little bit larger. So I'm going to choose a 12 point font. I'll go ahead and do a select. And there I have my updated option. So now if I go in here and do an LS, it looks like it's pretty much the same. Maybe I need to exit the terminal and do another control alt T to bring up a new terminal and Sure enough, it looks like that font is a little bit bigger here. In any case, it's a fixed point font. You can change where your terminal fires up and you can change your point size. You can change your background and your other colors. Many people give us a primary reason why they don't like Ubuntu is because Ubuntu is relying increasingly on the use of snaps. But I just see snap as an alternative package installer. And if you're running really any Linux, you can use APT as your package installer in a Debian based operating system. You can also use snaps. You can also use app images and you can also use flat packs. And many times those choices are up to you. I think that snaps are an advantage because there are several applications that are available that run better as a snap and there are applications that do not run better as a snap. And one such example of one that does not run better and yet is a snap by default in Ubuntu 2404 is Firefox. So I'm gonna do a sudo snap remove Firefox. This is a really base version of Ubuntu and so I really don't even have Firefox installed here and so it says that the snap for Firefox is not installed. But we're gonna go ahead and install Firefox as an APT package. And this is what you're going to do on your side. You can do a sudo snap remove on your Firefox. And then we do a sudo apt add or add apt repository for the Mozilla uh, repository. And that contains the Firefox web browser. And once we've installed that repository, we want to make sure that that repository is, has a higher priority than the snap package does. And we can do that with this particular echo command that places the priority of the APT package above the priority of the snap for Firefox. And then we do a sudo apt update and now we can successfully do a sudo apt install on Firefox and Firefox will not be installed as a snap, but will instead be installed as an APT package. Next, we're going to install the Chrome browser because that's one of the primary browsers that people use. And so we're going to install several dependencies 
for the install of the Chrome browser along with some of the other installations that we're going to do. We install the key, the signing key for the Chrome browser. Now we install the repository for the Chrome browser and this makes certain that anytime there is an update to Chrome, we get the new update. And we'll do a sudo apt update to update those in the repository list. And then we're going to install the Chrome browser and I'm going to install the stable version of the Chrome browser. And this means that anytime there is a new update to the Chrome browser, a sudo apt update and a sudo apt upgrade will upgrade this application as well. With web browsers, it's nice to have options. So we're going to go ahead and install some more dependencies and these dependencies will be used to install the Brave web browser. So let's bring down the signing key for the Brave browser with this particular curl command. And then let's go ahead and create the entry for the Brave browser in the repository list. And we do that with this command and now that we've done that, we can do another sudo apt update. And then a install of the Brave browser. And we're going to do that with a sudo apt install Brave dash browser. And now just like Chrome, the Brave browser will also receive updates anytime there's a new version of the Brave browser when you do an apt update followed by an apt upgrade to upgrade any packages. At this point we've installed the Firefox, the Chrome and the Brave browsers and if we go here and click on the app drawer you can see that we do have Firefox, Chrome and the Brave browser. So I can click on the Firefox browser and it will go ahead and come up and I can say yeah skip this step skip this step and then skip this step and then go ahead and say start browsing and at this point I have my brave browser I can come over here and right click on the dash menu and on the dash menu I can go ahead and click pin to dash and that way when I exit the Chrome browser, I'll still have an icon for it on the tray. Similarly to that, I can launch the Brave browser, go through its initial setup, and I can skip all of these things and finish that and then go ahead and right click on the Brave browser over here in the dash and say pin to dash. And now when I exit the Brave browser, its icon also remains on the Dash menu. The GNOME desktop environment, spelled G-N-O-M-E, is the default desktop environment in Ubuntu. And one of the things that it provides is quite a few add-ons in order to provide additional capability for your operating system. So one of the things we want to do is do a sudo apt remove on Chrome GNOME shell. And that is normally not installed, but it's a legacy package. It's something that you may do, need to do on your operating system. The next thing that we want to do is a sudo apt install on GNOME-browser-connector. And the GNOME browser connector is going to be required in order to put many of these um, add-ons that we're talking about into the system. Now we want to launch one of our Chrome derived browsers and that really means anything but Firefox and so I could either use my Chrome browser I installed but since I have an icon right there I'm going to go ahead and use the Brave browser. In the Brave browser, I'm going to go ahead and go over to extensions.gnome.org. 
And when this page comes up, it'll say click here to install the browser extension. We want to go ahead and do that. And I'll say add it to Brave and then add the extension. And now it says that that extension has been added to Brave. I'll go ahead and exit this screen and then I'll go ahead and repaint this and you'll see that it comes up and we no longer have that message at the top of the screen. There's several useful extensions that you might want to add. And one of the first extensions that I like to add is one called the Apps Menu. And so I'll click on it. I'll simply turn this on and say Install. And now that it's done, I'll back up one and this apps menu now gives you a menu up here for your apps. It's just another way to get to your applications. The second thing I want to install is a places uh, status indicator. And we click it and we turn it on and do an install. We then get a places up here on the top panel and that will give us various places if we have any additional bookmarks. Those bookmarks will be up there as well. This is a fast way to go to a particular folder uh, without having to explicitly launch your file manager. I'm hitting the back button again. And one of the next apps I like is one that's called IP Finder. And it's by Lynx Gem 32 or 33. I'll go ahead and click OK and click and install on it. And you'll notice up here in the upper right hand corner, it gives me my current WAN IP address with a lock that is in red and it is unlocked, which basically means I do not have a VPN up and running. The next one I want to add is LAN IP address. And I'll go ahead and say turn it on and install it. And this will show me the local address on my network, which in this particular case is 10.45.70.15. And that's because I'm running inside of a particular VLAN. And now for a particularly dramatic GNOME extension, we're going to install dash to doc. And dash to doc is an application that when we turn it on and we do an install, it goes ahead and if I minimize my window here, you see that it has moved my dash panel off the left side and it's put it more at the bottom of the screen. And now we have a uh, dash menu that looks a little bit more either Microsoft or Mac OS looking. Heading back into my Brave browser again, I'm going to back up one screen and I'm going to look for an application called Extension. And this is Extension List. It's a little puzzle piece here. I click on it and I go ahead and turn it on and do an install on it. And the advantage of that particular application is that up here on the top panel, we now have a pull down which gives us all of our various GNOME extensions. And I'm going to go over to the gear on Dash to Dock. Dash to Dock is a particularly powerful extension. And we can do things like, say, show the menu on all monitors, which I like as a default if you have more than one monitor. We can say the position on the screen is uh, at the bottom. And we could say it was on the left, the top, or the right. Intelligent Auto Hide means that if we bring a window down, it automatically hides it. If we bring the window up, it will reappear. And then we can also say uh, extend the uh, panel to the screen edges. I don't particularly like that one, but that's what it does. And then you can set up the icon size limit. So you can make the icons uh, smaller or you can make them larger. Um, and you can also uh, uh, set up a fixed icon size and then you can change the scale. The launcher screen has quite a few different options on it. One of the options I like here is the move 
uh, to move the show applications icon to when it opens the app drawer. Here you can see it on the right hand side. It says show apps. I like to move it to the beginning to be more like a start button lest I say it. And so now it is at the beginning. Under behavior you have lots of different options here and under appearance quite a few more as well. I especially like the customize opacity option and I'm going to change it from default to fixed and then I can go ahead and make this as transparent as I want. It's not really evident from the picture here what it's doing but it makes this dock rather translucent and so if I had a wallpaper in the background it would be able to show through the wallpaper if it were more uh, translucent and less opaque. There is also an option on the appearance menu that says show overlay at startup and I like to turn that one off. Suffice it to say there are many other options in dash to dock but I'm going to go ahead and exit it for right now and back at the terminal one of the things that you should know about is there is an environment variable called xdg under bar session under bar type and here you can see that I'm using the Wayland Display Manager. And there are some applications that don't work in the newer Wayland Display Manager, but instead require the older X11 Display Manager. If I go ahead and edit the GDM3 custom.conf file that you see here, you can have an option that says enable Wayland and you can set it equal to false and then it won't start that up. If you're interested in that, you can go to my last video and I explain that in more depth. So here I'm going to exit out of that. The other thing that we have in addition to the uh, display manager is we have the session manager. And so by default, the session manager in Ubuntu is the Ubuntu Session Manager. The APT Package Manager is pretty powerful, but I prefer sometimes to use a better front end called Nala. And so I'm gonna do a sudo apt install Nala, and all Nala is is a front end to APT that displays things in a form where they're just a little bit more legible. One of the features that the Nala front end has is you can do a sudo Nala fetch and Nala will check out all of the repositories and tell you which ones on the network are the fastest for loading from the various Ubuntu repositories and it will give you a list of those repositories and then you can specify which repositories you want to use and that will make the installation of software faster. In this particular case, it looks like the top three repositories are, of course, the fastest. So I'm just going to say one space two space three, which means I want to use those repositories. So I'll go ahead and say yes. And now when I do an installation, it will go ahead and use those particular repositories. So an example of using Nala might be if I were to install a package. Rather than doing a sudo apt install, I'll do a sudo Nala install. And here I'm installing Flatpak. And Flatpak is another package installer in addition to APT and Snap, which are built into Ubuntu. And so once we finish installing Flatpak, as we have here, we have to set up the Flatpak repo, and we do that with this command, Flatpak remote add. And we have to enter our sudo password in order to have that set up. And then as an example, I'm going to go ahead and install the OBS um, Open Broadcast Studio uh, as an example, using Flatpak with the Flatpak install, Flathub, which is the repository we just added, and then I'm going to install com.obsproject.studio. 
And so I'll say, yes, go ahead and install that. And it says it's going to make these installations. I said, yes, that's fine. And then it goes ahead and installs OBS Studio using a flat pack. After installing OBS Studio, I discovered that it did not show in the menu, but now if I go down and show the menu, you do see OBS Studio here. And it required that I reboot the operating system in order for OBS Studio to show up. And so it pops up and it gives you an auto configuration and it says, uh, optimized for streaming, optimized for recording. Well, primarily I use it for recording, but the product can be used for recording or for streaming. And so um, it gives you some other settings as far as the uh, screen size, resolution, canvas, all that. And so I'll go ahead and set that up. And it goes out and tests the recording encoder to make sure that it works does everything it's supposed to do. And then once it's through, we have OBS up and running. So I can say apply settings. And of course I can go out and create other profiles. Right now we're using OBS Studio to record this particular tutorial. I began this video by uninstalling the Firefox Snap and then installing Firefox as an APT package. In this particular case, I'm going to install a snap for an application called Local Send. Local Send is an application that is available for Linux, Windows, Mac OS, Android, and also iOS. And it is an application which allows you to move files between the various operating systems. So here, if we click on this and click on local send, it will come up and run the local send application. And it allows you to, in your preferences, give your workstation a name. Here it's arbitrarily chosen the name Secret Lemon. And I don't know that I really want my operating system being a lemon after all of this, but you can go down here and make a change to that and also other settings as well. And it's a very simple point and click application which will allow you to send and receive files between your phones or between other operating systems. One application that I don't appreciate particularly in Ubuntu is their file manager and they use a file manager that if you go under the menu and you do an about here, however we access that menu, I think it's over here, and we do an about, it just refers to it as files. But this is an application that is called Nautilus. And I don't like Nautilus for a number of reasons. So what we're gonna go ahead and do is we're going to install the Nemo file manager. And we do that with the sudo apt install nemo-y so that it won't prompt us and goes ahead and installs. For those of you that have heard of the Linux Mint operating system, Linux Mint, and there don't worry about that, it's just a random error. Um, the Linux Mint operating system uses Nemo as its file manager. So then, now that we've installed this file manager, or it's just about done installing it, we want to make that the default file manager for our Ubuntu operating system. We want to also make it the default desktop manager. So in order to make it the default desktop manager, I'm going to enter this G settings command. And then I'm going to also set the uh, show desktop icons equal to true for uh, org.nemo.desktop. And then I'm going to, for some reason, I need to uh, change the minimize applications. Oh, I remember what I was doing here. 
So one of my problems is if I click on something like the files application and it comes up and running, I like to be able to click on it again and have it minimize. And that's not the default way in which the system works. So instead, I'm setting up the click action to be minimize or previous. And now, if I click on files, we get the files menu. If I click on it again, it minimizes. So it becomes a toggle, and that's just one of the settings that I kind of like. Now that we've done all of that, we want to go ahead and edit the startup applications. So we click on startup applications here. We click on add, and the startup application I want to add is Nemo. And the command that I want it to execute is Nemo-Desktop. And then I'll go ahead and click Add here and dismiss this. And now in order to make all this take effect, I have to sit here and simply log off of the desktop. Now that I'm logged back in again, it's noteworthy to point out that if we click on this Files icon, we're really getting the Nautilus File Manager. And since I really don't need the Nautilus File Manager anymore, I'm going to go ahead and start a terminal. And I'm going to do a sudo apt remove dash dash purge on Nautilus. And that will go ahead and remove the Nautilus file manager. And when it does so, it will go ahead and remove this icon that you see for the file manager on the dash menu. And there it goes. So... In order to get a file manager back, we've installed Nemo, which also is called Files. And when it comes up, I'll go ahead and right click on it and say pin to dock. And suppose I want that at the beginning of my dock. Well, I can pick it up here and drag it over here. And sometimes it won't drag. So sometimes you have to click the show apps and then you can drag it over here. And we'll go ahead and put it at the beginning. Uh, let's see if it will cooperate. Okay, we're not quite there. We go now. We have it at the beginning, and I'll go ahead and put this one here. And I'm going to go ahead and unpin the help. So now I do an escape, and if I bring down my Nemo file manager and click the file menu, the Nemo file manager will come up and run. And as you notice. Nemo's a lot faster. If we do an about, it will also tell us it's running Nemo 6.0.2. One of the great things about running the Nemo file manager is that I can um, have various settings. For example, if I go into downloads, well, you're not going to see it here, but basically I could have um, one menu listed this way, and then if I go into the, say, uh, templates, uh, maybe templates isn't a good choice. I have to have something here that has some data in it. If I go into another folder in any event, it will remember the preferences for that folder. So I might want to have icons as the preference for one folder, and I might want to have details as the preference for another folder, and Nemo can remember that. Also, Nemo makes it easy to switch between the um, nomenclature here for uh, a pathway as opposed to the icons at the top and that becomes handy in doing some other types of operations. Many people will tell you that VLC is one of the best video players and they're not completely wrong however I have a video player that I like better and it's called SM Player and it's available for Windows, Mac and Linux as well and I'm going to do a sudo apt install on SM Player. And SM Player will come up and run and give you uh, really just about any codec that you can possibly imagine. It will be able to play either an audio or video file. It is extremely comprehensive. I would say the only advantage in running VLC is that VLC has the ability to deal with with live streams. And so now if I click on my 
dash menu here and go to my app drawer and I look for SM player I can launch SM player and SM player we can go under options we can go under preferences we can go under interface and we can go from icon set default to icon set dark do an apply and do an OK and now we have the dark menu on it as well as everything else out here. Another application that I really like to install is BTOP. So if I do a sudo apt install on BTOP, BTOP is a really convenient way to display information about your operating system from the terminal. And if I do a BTOP, you can see here that we have two cores and we have four gigs of memory on this particular uh, machine that I'm running, which just happens to be an Incas virtual machine. A super valuable application for giving you information about your running version of Linux is something called FastFetch. And so here we're installing the repository for fast fetch. So now we do a sudo apt update. And then we do a sudo apt install on fast fetch now that its repository is installed. And if we simply type fast fetch there we have a whole variety of information for our Ubuntu instance that we're running here. GNOME is a really powerful desktop environment and so there's an application called GNOME-Tweaks and if we go ahead and install GNOME-Tweaks which you see here I use Nala to install. It is installing the uh, packages it needs for GNOME tweaks and it's also auto removing a number of packages not required by the operating system. With GNOME tweaks installed if I go down to the app drawer and I look for tweaks in here and I'm looking for where it occurs somewhere in here let's just type in GNOME uh, tweaks there we are should have seen that earlier it brings this up and there are all types of updates that you can make in regards to how things are displayed on the operating system that goes beyond what you have in dash to dock and it's a very valuable add-on also I noticed that we were in when the, we were in the app drawer there was a B top plus plus so I'll go ahead and click it and it appears that that's just a way to bring up BTOP directly from the app drawer. There are lots of screenshot applications out there but to me the old standby is GNOME screenshot and we'll go to sudo apt install on GNOME dash screenshot and then if we click on our app drawer and we click on screenshot this is one of the ones that I like to go down here and pin to my dock. And basically it allows you to capture screens, windows, or selections. It's your most basic screenshot utility. There are lots of other really great screenshots utilities that are out there, but this is the old standby. And finally, one of the really nice utilities is one called Stacer and you can install it with the sudo apt install Stacer. And when Stacer comes up and running, it is an application which allows you to uh, take a look at various performance characteristics of the operating system and to do other types of things. So when I click on Stacer, it comes up and tells me what the current CPU utilization is what the current memory utilization is, what the current disk space utilization is. In this particular machine, um, it's a uh, Incas VM, and so it only had a 10 gigabyte disk, and so I'm using the majority of that. It's giving me my host name, it's giving me my distribution. 
Here I can go to look at my startup applications. There's my Nemo startup application. So this is a place I can go and edit that, make changes to it if I want. Um, there's a cleanup space here, which will clean up old applications. So I could, for example, say select everything in here and go ahead and look at them. And it says, okay, I would be able to delete uh, this amount of data from your system in doing a cleanup if you don't mind getting rid of all these logs. And so at this point, if I do a select all and clean that up, of course I have to provide my pseudo password. It goes ahead and cleans up all that space. We have search options to search for things. We have a lot of setting things which control uh, which particular services are starting up. Uh, we have a process viewer here. We have uh, the installed packages on your system. Uh, how many snap packages we have. How many general packages we have. Um, the CPU resource monitor. We have a ability to look at your networking on this machine. Also looking at which APT repositories are set up. And also um, some things about your window manager and some things about your uh, whether this program auto starts or not, that sort of thing. And then uh, sending feedback to the creator of Stacer. So Stacer is a nice application. It lets you put your fingers on a lot of things to simply configure them without going through a lot of trouble. So in summary, Ubuntu, like other Linux distros, is highly customizable. And consider changing the desktop to meet your particular requirements. And add utilities to your system to make it your own. And I had a friend once upon a time that said, you know, it's not truly yours until you void the warranty. So Linux, unlike Windows, will update most applications that you add to your configuration as a part of apt upgrade. Whereas Windows Update will only update the operating system and perhaps Microsoft Office, but not the third-party applications. So a Linux system with more installed applications and utilities doesn't run any slower than a stock system. And I have modified my Ubuntu desktop continually since I first installed it back in 2007. Anyway, that's it for today. Please subscribe and like to the channel and don't forget to hit that notification bell and we'll see you next time.